Zero Accounting Software 2023 Bank Feeds Credit Card Bank Fee Data Setup. Get ready to become an accountant hero with Zero 2023. Here we are in our custom Zero homepage going into the company file we set up in a prior presentation, that being the bank feed file. We're going to be duplicating some tabs to put the reports in as done every time. First, a word from our sponsor. Well, actually these are just items that we picked from the youtube shopping affiliate program but that's actually good for you because these aren't things that were just given to us from some large corporation which we don't even use in exchange for us selling them to you these are things that we actually researched purchase and use ourselves here we have a Western Digital WD Elements 20 terabyte USB 3.0 desktop external hard drive we use as part of our backup system, noting that if you lower the number of terabytes of storage, the price will lower dramatically as well. When you're thinking about a backup system, you're usually thinking about an online system or an external hard drive system like this or ideally some combination between the two giving you some redundancy. You can also work directly from an external hard drive like this, but there are some drawbacks to doing that. One being, if you use this as your primary drive you're working from, it's no longer a backup drive and you're going to need a backup system, possibly another external hard drive and or some kind of cloud backup system. And if you're working on something that takes up a lot of short term memory, a lot of RAM as you're working on it, such as video editing, the external hard drive can slow up the system. So you might want to come up with some kind of system where you download the project you're working on to your computer, to your C drive, or possibly to a solid state drive, which is a much more expensive uh, external hard drive as you do the work. Once the work is done, then save the project to an external hard drive such as this. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com where we have many different courses. You can purchase one at a time or have a subscription model giving you access to all the courses. Courses which are well organized, have other resources like Excel files and PDF files to download and no commercials. Duplicating, right click to duplicate and then we'll right click again to duplicate and then we'll go back to that middle tab go into the accounting drop down open up that balance sheet report the famous balance sheet needs no introduction it's the balance sheet tab into the right accounting drop down this time yes the income statement and then we're going to do the date range change we're working in 2022 so I'll hit the drop down hit it to 2022 January to December of 2022 the end of it that's the 31st updating that report as well let's go back to the first tab now first tab accounting drop down looking at those bank accounts this is where the information flowed through as we set up our checking accounts and when we think about bank feeds normally we think about the bank accounts of the checking accounts so we looked at those in prior presentations the credit cards work in basically the same way it's a little more confusing often for people to kind of think about the credit card because we have to deal with a liability account instead of a cash account but once you wrap your mind around that then the credit cards are actually kind of easier and more likely to be able to be uh, constructed and used uh, to build your financial statements directly from the bank feed data. In other words, we saw when we put together the checking transactions here that if we are in certain industries, we can basically construct our books from just the information coming in through the bank feeds. However, if I go to my flowchart over here, this is a QuickBooks desktop flowchart, but we're just looking at the flow of the transactions. We saw that if there were accrual transactions in play, such as the use of accounts payable or invoicing accounts receivable transactions sometimes when we have to deal with the sales receipts or inventory or payroll for example those are all examples of things that will throw a wrench throw a problem into the use of simply the bank feeds to create our financial transactions however with the credit cards uh normally the credit cards would be kind of like just the payment side 
of our bank feeds for the checking account. So usually with a credit card, if you're using a credit card, you're using it in a similar way, of course, as uh, the payments that you might be making for normal kind of business activity type of payments. And as we saw with the, with the checking accounts, those are usually the easiest things to set up because they're electronic transfers by nature because they're a credit card. Just like we saw in the bank feeds here, if you pay the utility bill or the phone bill and that kind of stuff, uh, then those are the easiest types of transactions to basically be able to wait till they clear the bank and then just kind of add them as uh, as they clear the bank. And that's what the credit cards basically would be designed to do if you're using you know a credit card instead of the checking account. So if I go to the balance sheet then just to see what's going to happen here, the checking account is usually an asset account unless it's overdrawn as we saw in the prior presentation, but it's usually an asset account. And that means it's gonna go down when we have expense type forms going out of it. And it's gonna be going up with basically deposits. Now the credit card is also from the same, from financial institutions, often the same financial institutions as you might have your checking account with, and therefore it should be fairly easy uh, to link as well. But when you make a payment from the credit card, instead of the checking account going down, you're going to have a liability going up. So that's the only difference, right? With a credit card, it's kind of like we started at the beginning. It would be like the bank account being overdrawn. Every time we buy something on the credit card, cash doesn't go down, but instead the liability goes up. And then when we, and then at some point we pay off the credit card, of course. And when we pay off the credit card, then the liability is going down. Notice we don't have any deposit side uh, of the transaction. We only have you know, the, the charges that we're gonna be recording with the credit card, and then we pay off the credit card. So it's actually kind of easier uh, in some ways because we don't have all this other stuff. The credit card doesn't run through every cycle that we're dealing with. In other words, the credit card isn't generally going to be part of our employee cycle because we're not going to pay our employees on the credit card typically it's not going to be uh, part of our a lot of our other you know normal kind of processes as the cash is the cash is involved in every cycle at some point uh, in time so uh that being the case let's let's set up the credit card now we can do it in the same fashion uh we did with the bank feeds to actually import the credit cards so uh, you could then, if I go to the first tab over here, we could go to our banking dropdown and we could simply add another uh, bank type of account. Now, so this is another kind of confusing component because it's actually a credit card type of account, but because we're connecting it to the bank feeds, we're gonna be doing it you know, in the same range here. And that's why it has its own little special area. It's the financial institution transaction account. Let's say this is for, let's just say it was for American Express. American Express. Um, American Express. I can't spell American or Express. And I'm an American that likes things done expressly. That's why this American uses spell check because that's what, <laughs> then you don't need to spell. Okay. American Express. Let's do uh, this one, American Express. Let's, it doesn't really matter because I'm not actually going to connect. But if you were going to actually connect to it, then it's going to say connect to American Express, just like we did with the, with the bank accounts. The different institutions may have different ways to verify, but usually they're pretty easy to 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 facilitate. Uh, the you have to give them verification, log into the account, or whatever they ask for. But usually that's pretty easy. So I'm gonna skip, however, here, because what we're gonna do is upload the information uh, and do it that way. So I'm saying don't connect to my bank. So we've just set up a credit card account. So I'm gonna say the account, I'm just gonna call it generic credit card account. Obviously in practice, you might want to uh, put the name of the credit card. If you have multiple credit cards you're dealing with, then you might want to put like the name of the credit card, possibly the last four digits of the credit card, which is not something you want to give out often to others. However, for external reporting, you could group the credit cards into a group, right? And, and that way you can have it internal reporting so you can distinguish which credit cards you are using and external reporting, group the credit cards together as one lump sum using Zero's beautiful uh, edit layout tab down here to group things together. 
So I'm gonna go down and say select an account. It's gonna be a credit card account. So credit card, uh, credit card number, I'm gonna make one up. There it is, that's not an actual number. So if you're gonna try to like uh, last four digits, if you're gonna try to you know, buy something with that, uh, it's, not, it's not gonna work. So save it, save and continue. Boom, credit card has been in there. So it's in the same banking area because it's basically, this is the bank feed area is the uh is the general idea so let's go in now notice that also added uh an account to the check to the to the register so if i go to the account drop down what i'm trying to show here is if i go to my chart of accounts then we also have our credit card account that has been populated here now it's pulling up i didn't put an account number in it so the account number should actually be somewhere down here in the credit card area. Maybe it's uh, in unpaid expenses, claims, sales tax. Maybe I want it under the accounts payable. So maybe I make the credit, the number 2010, let's say. So I'm gonna say, let's go back into this and say, this is gonna be 2010 and then save it. And so now I can locate it kind of down here even though it's still kind of a bank account and that bank account term doesn't really mean current asset bank account the bank account term means basically it has the capacity to connect to the bank feeds as does the credit cards all right so now i'm going to upload the transaction so this means that you can download the transactions from your bank in a similar fashion as you can with the bank feeds if you so choose so if you go to your bank, your this would I mean I'm just looking at Wells Fargo, but you could go to your American Express or whatever. If you don't want to connect directly to them, or you want to practice, you want to put together your own bank feeds to practice with, you can download this information from there or make your own uh, file, which we'll, we'll take a look at in a second. So uh, to download it, you go to your financial institution, and usually somewhere there's going to be download account activity, which is different than looking at the finance by the uh, reports you're not looking at your bank statements or credit card statements because those will be in pdf format we want this in a format that can be uploaded to the system which will generally be for example oftentimes they have a quickbooks format which isn't quickbooks online software it's just like a data input format so that one works pretty well and that most institutions have that quicken you don't really want that one uh, and then if they don't have those, any of those, you can use the comma delimited, which usually is opened in like a spreadsheet format. And then it, if you want to just practice, you can make your own file with uh, a spreadsheet and then just create a comma delimited or CSV file. So let's see what that looks like. So I'm going to go up top and just say that if I go back into my accounting and I go into my bank feeds, and I wanted to manually import. And by the way, you might want to manually import in situations where it's like you're going really far back, like you're going more than a year, like a year back or more, because sometimes you can get more data from the bank by manually downloading it as opposed to connecting to the bank. And then possibly you might want to connect to the bank after, after that. That's one reason you might use a manual upload in practice other than just to practice with. Once you get the data in, from the manual upload or from the bank feeds you will be in what i call the bank feed limbo area where all the information will be in your system but not yet used to create the financial statements it's it's in limbo it has not been uh, brought through it needs a little bit more information and some enlightenment in order to bring it on through the promised land to be used to create the financial statements so we can up if i go to the drop down here then we can import the statement so if I import the statement, that makes you think the way they word it, that you're gonna get the PDF file and import it, but that's not what's happening here. Uh, in, it, what, instead, you're gonna be importing these files that we look like. So download bank statements from your online banking. Again, you're not really downloading like a bank statement, you're downloading a series of, of transactions. You're downloading like the bank feed. Now you could like those bank formats is an OFX, a QFX, a QIF, there's that QBO, which is quite common. And if usually most of them will have a spreadsheet format, which will be S CSV if nothing else, right? Now, if you wanna make your own, you can look at the template here 
And like, if you just wanna make your transactions, you can actually just pull up the template and you can put your data input into this template, you know, date, amount, uh, description, and, uh, and, and, that's, and, and that's it. And then you can upload your own data and you can, and you can play with the bank feeds that way. Uh, I'm gonna be using this file. So I downloaded a file that looks like this. It's a credit card file. And, uh, but it's in quick, it looks like a QuickBooks like desktop program or something, but it isn't. If I right click on it and I, uh, it is a, it's formatted, I guess, by QuickBooks or, or they got, came up with the formatting or whatever, but it's not actually the software. It's just a data input format. It's just a way to format the data that can easily be brought in to these online applications. So it's a, it's an OFX data dot QBO. Okay. So let's import that uh, in here. So I'm just gonna say, select the file. It's on the desktop, which is a messy situation, but I know where everything is. My desk, the top of my desk has a lot of stuff on it, but it's not like, uh, it's not like I'm unorganized because you just don't understand how I organize it. So I'm gonna upload it and it's uploading 16 transactions so okay so then we're just gonna complete the import and there it is so now just to recap if i go into my accounting transaction and i look at uh, my bank accounts i now have my credit card account has stuff in it now so so i'm going to go into so it's all negative now you have the same beginning balance issue with the credit cards because it's only gonna be pulling in the activity. So if you had activity before the time that you started putting the credit card in, you're gonna to have to deal with that beginning balance issue, which we might talk, we'll talk about in a future presentation when we do the first bank reconciliation. Once we're, we've done that, everything should run smoothly. It should be quite easy after that. If I go into the dropdown, the account transactions, we've got the account transactions on the right, these are the transactions that we have made. We don't have any because we're usually with the credit cards, we're going to be dependent on the financial institution to create the financial statements because they're perfect transactions to do that. I mean, we could have a system and in a full service accounting system, every time I make a, a purchase on the credit card, I would then record it as a purchase and then match it to the credit card using the financial institution as a verification. But we're getting to the point where the credit cards, we're, we're so confident in them, and because the turnaround time is so fast that these are perfect transactions to just say, look, I'm just gonna depend on the bank here. So in other words, when I record the transaction, I'm not gonna record it on my side. I'm gonna wait till it clears the bank, which should happen in one to three days and then I can just record it that way. So, so I'm, I'm for, we're so confident about these transactions that that's what most people are gonna do. So that means we didn't record anything on our side. The bank is recording them on their side because this is what got pulled in from the bank feeds. So this is what got pulled in. It's not reconciled yet. We have the cash coding. Remember, if you don't see this, you can go into your user uh, area and then just turn on the cash coding so that you can see the cash coding if you want that it's not on by default you have to go into you know the users uh, and then turn on in the banking section I think the cash coding we've talked about that before I won't do it again because we're running along here and then if I go into the reconcile so now we can build our financial statements so this is what I call the bank feed limbo because these transactions have now been brought in from the bank but they have not yet been used to make the financial statements. They're still missing something. Something's wrong. They're not quite there yet. They don't know. They don't have all. They don't have everything to be fully fulfilled, and therefore be pulled in to uh, to the promised land. So what do they need? Of course, uh, all we have. These are all going to be usually decreases. So unlike with the checking account, we don't really have deposits, but we have we have payments, which are kind of like but. But really, we only, uh, you know, we have, we pay off the credit card. But really, every all the transactions here are going to be expense type transactions, and then we pay off the credit card, right? Those are the transactions that are going to be here. So usually, the other side of the transaction, what we will construct 
is an expense for things that we're going to be purchasing. Although we could have purchased inventory and fixed assets uh, as, as well. So that's what we'll do next time. And as we do that, like with the checking account, we can add bank rules so that even though the first time we do this, it's a pain, but when we set it up properly and we do it well, and we fully, uh, we don't, we don't send, you know, people to the wrong areas once we pull them out of bank feed limbo and then send them to like to to a bad a worser spot and mess up the financial statements if we set it up properly then uh then it'll be basically automated going forward and then things will be easy we got to go through the pain to start and then uh and then once we once we once we put in the work man you got to put in the work i don't i'm not going to say that for it it's a trendy for it but it's kind of it's kind of applicable here because you got to do this you got to do it the first point and then it'll be easy after that so we'll start doing that uh, in future presentations no change to the financial statements yet so we don't need to take a look at the trial balance or anything and we'll move on next time